Hello everyone and happy Wellness Wednesday. I'm very excited to be able to talk about financial wellness today and I'm glad that y'all can all be here with me. So today I'm going to talk a lot about my financial wellness and how I've been really focusing on that this past week and I'm going to share some tips and ways to achieve better financial wellness in your own life and let's just go ahead and get started. So to start off, I wanted to define financial wellness. Basically just having an understanding of your financial situation and just being able to take care of it so that you can cope with financial challenges that might be in your future. So I first of all wanted to talk about the areas that I need improvement in in the financial dimension of wellness in my own personal life and those areas are pretty much can be summed up by saving, setting and following a budget and also just setting financial goals. So then I kind of wanted to go into each one of those topics specifically and some tips that I've been implementing just to really better my own financial wellness and hopefully by sharing what I'm doing I can help someone else out there. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. So the first category that I wanted to talk about was saving. So kind of just looking at your life as a whole and saying where can I save money, what outlets do I have and what can I do to really improve. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was student discounts and as a college student there are so many student discounts out there that many people don't really know about and you can easily just search your state or region or city or wherever you might live and you can find a lot of student discounts. I know here off the top of my head like Harris Teeter has coupons or they have like 10% off student discount your entire grocery purchase. Um, I think I was talking to one of my coworkers and like Arby's and some McDonald's and Chick-fil-A locations have discounts too. So you just really have to ask. Also a lot of local shops have them. I used to work at a retail store and they had a 10% off student discount. So really just asking anywhere that you're going shopping, do you offer a student discount? Seeing if they have one and saving some money because of it. Another thing that I've been really working on is shopping by price of things, not by brands of some products. Just because I've grown up with certain brands of foods or products in general where I've always had those so I don't really like to stray away from them. but. I've kind of learned in college just to make some better decisions when it comes to certain things that I don't really need to shell out a ton of money on. Um, that, that can go a lot along with like cooking. Um, it really just depends on you and your personal preferences, but um, instead of buying like more expensive tomato marinara sauce for pasta, I've learned to buy like the store brand and then use my own seasoning and that just gets me a little bit farther. That's just like one simple thing to do that will get you a little bit farther in saving money and that's pretty much just one thing. And I guess another thing that you could do is just kind of comparison shop. So I do a lot of my grocery shopping at Harris Teeter, but I know you can try out Publix, you can try out Food Lion, you can really try out a bunch of different grocery stores and see what does have the best pricing options. I know there's also like Aldi and Lidl or Lidl, I'm honestly not sure how to say that one, but that's just something else. I go to Lidl or Aldi for produce sometimes just because they have cheaper produce and it's still just as good. Um, but I'll go to Harris Teeter's for some of the other things I need if I need something that is a specific brand that I don't want to stray away from. So then another saving tip that I had was when I babysit, if the family does pay me in cash, I try to like save 90% of it and then I kind of like treat myself and use about 10 or 20% just to let myself buy some things that I'm needing, but I really try to save most of the income that I am receiving. And the same thing goes for when you're working, if you do have a, a paycheck every two weeks or so. Um, something that I do is I try to put all of it in my savings account and really not touch it, but if I do have to touch it, I'll try to let myself have like 10% because I have to pay for car insurance and groceries and those kinds of things. So when you do have those expenses, you need to save just to have those and to pay for them. But also I do like to allot myself a little bit to spend on things if I am needing something extra. And lastly, one other thing that I like to do just to save money is I, I know it's kind of basic and cliche, but I just have a jar of cash and coins in my house where I can just put all my ones if I, I try to pick like one type of bill, if that makes sense. So I did like last summer, I think I did $5 bills and just every $5 bill that came into my possession went into the jar and I never touched it. And then I just counted up at the end of the summer and had a, a little bit of money, which was nice just to have. But um, when it comes to cash flow, if you do have um, a way in your life that you are getting cash, like babysitting is one for me personally. I try to save, if I'm to get tw like tens or twenties, I save all the tens in that jar and then I put everything else like in my bank account. Just another way to see how you're saving and that's just something that I like to try to do. So one other thing that I try to do is setting financial goals. So I'm, I haven't always been the best at this, but this is definitely something I've tried to implement just in the last like couple years in my life. Last summer my dad was like, you need to earn this amount of money to have in your savings account so that you can pay this, this, and this. And my dad was able to do that for me last year. This year I'm definitely more on my own. So I personally have set a goal of what I want my savings account to reach this summer. And I 
really wanted to get there so that I can pay my bills and then also have some money left over. But just setting a financial goal for yourself really does help you get there. Um, I think just having a set number really lets you realize like where you're at and where you want to be and how close you are to reaching your goal. So I think what's best for most people is to try to save 10% of your net income into your savings account. Um, that's just something I read somewhere. But I try to save really as much of my paycheck I, as I can and then when I do have those expenses it does come out of my savings account. But that's just another way to really just section off your paycheck and save that way too. And lastly, the thing I wanted to talk about was budgeting. I know all of these go so hand in hand because it is financial wellness and it's just like all money most of the time and just your finances in general. But budgeting is something that I feel like you have to have set numbers so that you can accomplish those goals. So if you are setting a financial goal, it's definitely very helpful to have a budget that correlates with that. So only spending X amount on groceries this week or spending X amount this month. I try to not give real numbers because I don't want to like give the specifics of my life, I guess. But um, so I think just setting a general goal of like, I only want to spend this amount on food this week or each week of the month, that kind of correlates with your paycheck and your personal life. Just something that's helpful to me. And even just setting a monthly goal of how much you don't want to spend over this amount, it can really just allow you to see your finances and keep control over them. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I really hope you enjoyed this Wellness Wednesday talk. Um, just check the description box down below and for any other details about what's going on with Campus Recreation and Wellness, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye for now.